What's up guys, Duper1212, and it's List Day. Ah yes, List Day, and today we're continuing my series looking at the top 10 best cards in every main set of the game. I know it's been a little while, but, uh, uh... The next set on the docket is Photon Shockwave. This set really gave a good old shock to the meta. Despite being still early Ixi era, some really cool meta-defining cards managed to come out in this set, making the Discord and I uh, have, a, ha have a bit of a, a time compiling this list. The set's real good, specifically because it was a set that gave us the tools to create the famous Dino Rabbit! Spoiler alert, but we also got photons in this set as well as some various uh, numbers and other crap. It was basically just a good utility set for the XC era. As always, if you guys want to get in on the list making stuff, make sure you go to the link below to join my Discord channel. Once you do all the intro stuff and get the proper permissions, you guys can just help me with the list or you can chat in general, stuff like that, as well as participate in our now monthly tournaments. Are you bored of the current meta because you really can't play Yugi Mans? Well, uh, download yourself some EDO Pro and hook up with one of your Davinator tournaments. Most of them are free. We do still do some paid tournaments. If you're a Patreon member, you get those for free. But between the monthly tournaments and the gym challenge, that's, that's, that's all you, baby. So check that out, guys. You're a little bored or you just hate every entry on this list. <laughs> the power is yours. Without further ado, let's get started with Photon Shockwave. Number 10, Alexandrite Dragon, a vanilla beat stick. This level 4 light dragon has 2k attack and 100 defense. Uh, there isn't much to say about it. It's a level 4 normal monster with 2,000 attack power. What makes this card good is because it's a normal dragon and a light. Uh, normal dragons become pretty good when we start getting things like heretics and stuff because uh, it lets them toolbox their extra deck out. So, you know, that's, that's cool. I don't actually you know what else to say about this. It's just a, it's just a garnet type thing that we needed to fill a hole in the format. I didn't even write down its flavor text in my script, so I can't even read it. F***ing idiot. Anyway, let's move on to number nine. Number nine is a continuous trap card, Dark Smog. Dark Smog has the following effect. If a bunch of idiot dwarves sneak into your house at night, burn the village. Oh, that was forced. Once per turn, you can target one monster in your opponent's graveyard, discard a fiend type monster, and banish that target. It's basically a continuous DD Crow. That's, uh, that's actually pretty solid. And the discarding a fiend type monster, you know, uh, might seem like a bit of a specific kind of cost, but this card ages well because it becomes a, it, it becomes a, a pretty solid little fun, like, BA tech card, uh, depending on the format. Especially early when they first came out. As long as you have a fiend type deck that likes discard stuff, you got yourself a pretty handy little side deck option. Not only that, but it discards by effect, not by cost, so it, I, I believe Dark Worlds will work with this thing too. Obviously, uh, DD Crow is probably better because it's just a hand trap and it, it's a little more versatile, but if you are really looking to just absolutely punish your opponent over and over and over and over again in more of a floodgate instead of a reactionary trap, uh, this is actually a pretty solid option if your deck can run it. Number eight is number 20. <laughs> <laughs> Number of monsters make my lists weird. Number 20, Giga Brilliant. Giga Brilliant is a light insect exceed monster with 1800 attack and defense. Woot! Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card. All monsters you currently control gain 300 attack power. That's permanent, baby! A monster that just gives everything a mediocre attack boost doesn't sound particularly good, and I assure you it's... Not anymore. But at the time, uh, we didn't really have a ton of rank fours and rank threes, so, and which would eventually become the two best toolboxes we have, pretty much. Eh, eight's up there, eight and seven are up there too. So at this point in time, it doesn't have a lot of competition, but it does fill a very interesting hole that especially early XC monsters were, were actually really struggling with. Attack power is over 2,500. Yeah, uh, Gem Knight Pearl too strong. I believe Konami felt that in the early XC era, it was probably important to make sure that our rank 3s and 4s were particularly weak because they are very easy to make uh, as an attempt to try to balance them out. Yeah, they, uh, rank 4s kind of got walled by Blue Eyes White Dragon for like a very long time. And rank 3s aren't much better. So uh, something that allows you to at least over time accrue some extra attack power, push for game, things like that, something that XC monsters were struggling with a little bit, is inherently useful and, and it fills a hole that we needed. Not only that, it's a light, uh, so that's cool. It kind of fits the theme of the set. The rank 3 pool does need a beat stick, so th this does a pretty good job for that. Number 7, Deep Dark Trap Hole. Ah, ain't nothing like good, deep, 
Trap hole, baby. Poor Goyo. If only he knew. What's this baby do? This normal trap card says when a level fire higher monster is special summoned, banish that monster. That's it. And clearly Deep Dark here is uh, designed to get us to stop playing synchro monsters and start playing the new Fandangled XC monsters. <laughs> stop all the synchro summoning. Not only that, but uh, special summoning level five or higher monsters is something decks do. Even if it's an XC deck, if it's like a rank eight deck, I bet you anything they're summoning level eight monsters, this works against it. Granted, you're hitting the material, not the boss monster, but even still, it's a good way. It's, it's a side deck option against certain decks. Since the beginning of time, and probably time immemorial beyond, somebody somewhere in Yu-Gi-Oh! is special summoning a big, dumb beat stick that's like level freaking five or higher. This card will always be a good tech option depending on the meta because it is simply just a solid card for what it does. Not only that, but because it is a trap hole, it gets the boosted boon of getting all the trap trick support. Obviously that's a bit anachronistic at this point in time, but that does mean the card ages very well. Number six is Kage to Kage. Dust to dust. Kage to Kage is a level four dark reptile monster with an attack and defense we don't care about. I care. What's this little tiny shadow lizard even do? Well, it's level four and it's in an early XC era set. I'll give you one guess. It can't be used for synchro summon. Says so on the card. Cannot be normal summon or set. Must be summoned by its own effect, which is when you normal summon a level four monster, you can special summon this thing from your hand. I wonder why one would want to do that. Maybe so you can XC summon. That's what it does. And you can't use it for synchro. Kage to Kage is very good because not only is it a free dark level 4 body you can just put on the board for use in Ixi and now Link summoning. Being that it is a reptile does mean it is searchable by King of the Feral Olymps, another rank 4 monster. Wow, look at that synergy. In my rank 4 spam deck, I can search the stuff that allows me to spam more rank 4s. Woot! This is one of my favorite Ixi era cards. I've played it so many times it's ridiculous because it is just simply an easy free body. Number five is Mataion, the Time Lord. This thing is not XC material. It's far from it. Well, I, well, you could use it, I guess. Doctor Who here. Oh, lovely. Was for one of the longest times, one of the best side deck cards we have were ever given. It, this thing just breaks boards like nobody's business. It is a level 10 fire fairy monster. Weird, with zero attack and defense. What do? If you control no monsters, you can normal summon this without tributing. Well, that's good because it's level 10. <laughs> Cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. Wow, uh, what a pain in the ass to get rid of. You take no battle damage from attacks involving this card. Oh, pretty good. It has no stats. So it has no stats and it's pretty hard to get off the board and you can just kind of slap it there. Interesting. At the end of the battle phase, if this thing battled, return as many monsters on the field to the hand except this thing and burn your opponent for 300 for each. Then once per turn during your standby phase, you shuffle this thing back into your deck. Yeah, see, this is what you do. You go second, your opponent made a big old board, you slap this puppy down and just crash into it, whatever you want and then pff, everything goes bye-bye. And if they're extra deck monsters, they spin to the extra deck. Yeah, that, that's a good removal there. Doesn't target, doesn't destroy, can't be destroyed, woo. And because it has some inherent protection and you don't take any battle damage, it's, it's pretty much a free attack. Especially this early in the XC era and even in kind of into the modern era. This is kind of hard to stop. If it hits the board, it kind of sticks. <laughs> I love Matayan. I think this card's cool as hell. I really like the idea of, of cards that uh, break a board, but they kind of... Uh, bork your turn a little bit in order to do so. I think they're fun and they're balanced and they're kind of neat. It's an interesting deck. I think Time Lords are cool. I think Time Lords are cool. Number four is Wind Up Zen Mains. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Level three Fire Machine XC Monster. 1500 attack, 2100 defense. You're summoning this in defense mode, I assure you. If this face of card would be destroyed, you can detach one material from it instead. Once per turn, during your end phase, if you used the first effect, target one card on the field and destroy it. Ah, here we go. This thing is basically a rank three Baguska. Here we are, early days of the XC era, and we're already getting some pretty interesting tech options for our extra decks. Rank threes now have the option to, if uh, I don't have anything good to do, I can just play Zen mains in defense mode and beg my opponent to try to get rid of it. They're going to have to throw like 
a couple of destruction effects or battle at it in order to try to get rid of it, and if it doesn't actually leave the field, it takes another card. So, like, it becomes a very weird position to put your opponent in because they're going to have to sacrifice tons of resources to get rid of this stupid Zen Mains. And at 2100 defense, it's just big enough to be obnoxious to, like, normal summon something to get over it, so you kind of need to make an extra deck play to get rid of it, and that's just even more resources you need to dump into this into your stupid board and try to get rid of a dumb defense mode wind-up toy. Well, why are you pulling me? I'm right! The card is surprisingly good, especially at this point in the game. And if you guys missed this era of Yugi Mans, uh, just get on Duel Links. Like, this set basically just came out in Duel Links. It's like the same set. So you too can experience what it's like to get stalled by Zen Mains. Remember when I told you this was the Dino Rabbit set? Uh, it's the Dino Rabbit set. What is Dino Rabbit? It's a deck with dinos and a rabbit. What are the dinos? Bunch of vanillas, but they make these things. A Volzar Logia and a Volzar Dolka. Despite being the boss monsters for a deck called Dino Rabbit, they're dragons. I, I think the idea is, I think the Avolzars are like, correct me if I'm wrong, but if memory is serving, I, I, I didn't put this in the script. This is just off the top of my head. I think they're like reptiles at like the low levels, and then they turn into like dinosaurs, and then I guess now they're dragons, so they're like evolving, like Evolzor. I, th I think that's the gimmick here. These rank four fire dragon XC monsters are both made by overlaying two level four dinosaur monsters. Okay, so you're playing a dino rabbit. You make one of these. What do you get for him? Well, Lockie has the following effect. When a monster would be normal or special summoned or a trap or spell is activated, attach two materials from this card, negate that summon or activation, and if you do, destroy it. Uh, yeah, that's just solemn judgment. This early in the XC era, and we get possibly one of the best negations on an XC monster we will ever get. That's stupid. No offense, but I think it's kind of gross. Granted, it's landlocked to dinos, but uh, they just keep getting good support. It's always generic, because uh, dinosaurs aren't really an archetype, they're just a type in the game, and so, therefore, all of their support tends to be relatively generic for the type of monster, not an archetype. So yes, they are landlocked, but they're not landlocked like other things are. And Dolka uh, is also pretty good, not as good as Lagia, but I'll, I'll throw it in here too. What Dolka does is when your opponent activates a monster effect, you detach one material from it, negate it, and destroy it. So there you go, That there's the there's the, the other solemn, uh, solemn strike. Lagia handles your summons and your spells and traps, Dilka handles your monster effects. Have them sit next to each other, your opponent can't do a damn thing. Like I said, Lagia hits more, it's probably the better of the two. It's also got a little bit more attack power, so it's a little harder just to beat over. It's the better of the two, but they kind of are seen as a pair, so I'm, I'm sticking them into the pair. R.I.P. Solda. These two are why Dino Rabbit was a deck, because uh, you made these things, and they're good. All right, number two is the rest of Dino Rabbit, the rabbit part, Rescue Rabbit. So, you need to make Loggy and Dulka. How do you do it? You normal summon Rescue Rabbit, and, and then all your dreams come true. Level 4 Earth Beast Monster, which seems to have nothing to do with the other ones. <laughs> following effect cannot be special summoned from the deck i bet you forgot it did that i did too except till just now <laughs> you can banish this face up card to special summon two level four or lower normal monsters from your deck with the same name but destroy them during the end phase because that will ever happen and it's got a hard ones per turn okay so you summon the rabbit you sack the rabbit get two vanilla dinos make lagia proceed to win the duel but there's your play line boys we did it. I knew that was gonna be a shitty story. The cool thing about Rescue Rabbit is it's not landlocked to beasts in any way and it's level four or lower. So this thing works in rank three decks too. It's just, and what I really like about it is an inherent plus one in card advantage but requires you to run two vanillas which are bricks in your deck. So I believe that is kind of a fun balancing agent for the card. That didn't seem to matter because it was at one and then like two for a really long time because like plus ones are good and you can play it in Melfi's. That sounds like the best card in the set to me. <laughs> Overall Rescue Rabbit is one of my favorite cards in this set and it's it's up there as far as cards in general. I just really like Rescue Rabbit. And he's cute. Like that little hat's adorable. Who are you going to save? I love all the rescue cards. They're fun. Honorable mention is going to be Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, the cover card for the set. You can special summon this card from your hand by tributing two monsters with 2k or more attack power. Technically speaking, you can play him in anything, but he works best in photons because they can search him and shit with the, the rank 4. 
I don't play it. It's in Duel Links right now. I should know this. During the battle step, when this thing battles an opponent's monster, you can target that monster, banish this thing and the opponent's monster, and if it was an XC monster, at the end of the battle phase, you return both of them, and this thing will gain attack power for each material the banished XC monster had. Uh, what, 500? 500 for each material. What makes this interesting removal is, despite the fact that it does target, it is non-destruction removal. It's a 3k B stick itself, so it, you know, it's a good monster. And by banishing a face-up XC monster, uh, even though it doesn't get rid of it permanently, it does get rid of all of its material, which normally makes that Xe monster a beat stick. It gets rid of any effect it might have. Also, it's the signature card of, of, of Kite, I guess. And we have a dishonorable mention. The trap card Sound the Retreat! Holy shit! This is one of the worst dishonorable mentions we've had. Wow, is this card bad! It's incredibly disrespectful! Return all monsters you control to your hand. Holy <laughs> shit! It's not even all monsters on the field. It's just everything you got, just scoop that crap right back up. Why would you want to do that? A mask and pulse to everything on your side of the field really doesn't have very much function. I suppose if you have a lot of monsters like Stratos that do a thing when they're summoned, bouncing it to your hand is uh, a good way to reuse it, I guess. There's lots of targeted uh, bouncing that will only do one monster that you can use that won't bounce everything else you don't want to. And if you're playing Dark Worlds, and you want to get the scar effects, but you had to summon them, oh, I guess you can put them back. Oh my god. I am really trying over here, boys. I... I don't know. I don't know what you're supposed to do with this. Like, every single function I can think of, there is a better card to do it, and even then, it's not that good of a play to begin with. This is real bad. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to MetaMat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. Number one is one of the most obnoxious cards in the game, One Day of Peace. More like One Day of Please Shoot Me, Stop Stalling. This normal spell card has the following effect. Each player draws one card. Neither player can take damage until the end of your opponent's next turn. Okay, so yeah, it's One Day of Peace. We each get a turn, no one takes any damage. We each get a card, you know, Kumbaya, uh, I drew into Exodia. But it does contain... Ugh. It's bad card advantage because you use a card to get a card that's a neg that's that's a, a net zero and they get one so it's a neg one in card advantage but if you're simply trying to dig through your deck uh i don't really care if my opponent's drawing crap if i'm just trying to dig for exodia that i don't care i'm just going to win that is how valuable resources in Yu-Gi-Oh are the more you can draw the better your chances are that you are going to win so much so that even a bad neg one draw card still sees time on the limited list simply because we don't like cycling cards in Yugi mans and not only does it play into exodia strategy super well uh by not only letting you just draw a card but also preventing any damage so you don't get otk'd while you're trying to find exodia it also like doesn't make you discard first or something so like it's just it's just a pure pull a card off the top of your deck which i think is reason why we have such a hard time keeping cards that just draw cards in this game the card's good. The card is very good. I do believe it should be at one because having a bunch of these, again, plays in exactly to what you want to do when you're trying to just FTK with Exodia. It's goofy. It's, it's a goofy card. And I guess you could even play it in a mill deck because you're just trying to get your opponent to go through their deck. Sure, why not? Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the list. Uh, I had too much coffee today. I think you probably noticed me bouncing around. I got a piece so freaking bad. I cannot wait to end this recording. I'm doing it right now. I I don't care. I'm getting out of here. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> All right, fine. If you guys don't control the matter, who will? Uh, I gotta go pee. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Well, looks like they made it through the video, but you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.